Hi there, this is Paul Samus, and I'm with a friend of mine, Agaricon, Foamytopsis officinalis. It's had a long history of use uh, by peoples in both in Europe and as well as North America. Uh, one of the things I think uh, why our ancestors were attracted to this mushroom was it takes on anthropomorphic forms, oftentimes resemble that of humans. Here's two legs, a little cute little butt. And um, so these mushrooms have been carved in, uh, into figures and that have been revered in many cultures. And we know it's very powerful as a medicinal mushroom. So I think it's attracted human interest because of its anthropomorphically interesting forms to that of humans or animals, and the fact that it also has potent medicinal properties. This mushroom we was sent to us by a logger environmentalist, yes. Um, and I said, please don't pick it. And he goes, well, the forest is gonna be clear cut in the next few days. And I said, okay, good reason. So Marty, bless you, Marty, uh, climbed up in a very dangerous situation, he said. He's an experienced climber, uh, and it was very difficult for him to acquire this, but he, he acquired it. We then took a small piece of tissue, we cloned it, so we saved the strain, even though now the forest has been cut. So this is something I'm passionate about. We have 65 stra strains of agaricon on culture currently. We're looking for a super strain. Uh, these mushrooms have a very strong anti-inflammatory and anti viral and immunomodulatory properties. It's a unique combination of attributes that can help humans fortify their immune system to resist pathogens. So in the search of a super strain, much like Mary Hunt, Mary Hunt was a lab tech and working in Chicago and her discovery of a moldy cantaloupe in 1943 led to the commercialization of penicillin. Even though Alexander Fleming discovered it in 1928 that penicillin and penicillium molds would inhibit the staph bacteria, it was her strain of the moldy cantaloupe that led for to a super strain that allowed for the commercialization of penicillin to save literally millions of lives. We are in the search for a super strain of agaricon. Now, will this little guy be a super strain? We don't know. But this is what I'm dedicating my life and my resources is to protect this species that's on the bridge of extinction in Europe and only grows in the old growth forest. We want to collect a genomic library of great microdiversity and look for super strains that have potent anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and immunosupporting properties. So this is what I'm passionate about and I feel it's a thread of knowledge through the centuries, through thousands of years. And so I'm just one micro-knot of many in this long chain of custody of knowledge to help the commons. So let's celebrate nature together. And you too. Thank you.